Hey, hey homos. homos, welcome to <coughs> Happy Healthy Homo. We are back with another episode. I'm still Keegan. And I'm still Joe. And we are still boyfriends, believe it or not. <laughs> um, after a holiday as well. So I know, Joe. we had a very long holiday together, which hopefully you've, you've noticed the tan. Uh, glowing. Thank you. Um, if you're watching, if you're yeah. listening, then just take it from me. I'm yeah, proud. we're very, very tanned. <laughs> um, very exciting episode today. We are, we've got a guest. We are joined mm-hmm. by Nick Collier, or you might know him better as Elle of the Day. Um, it's always nice when we get a guest in, isn't it? I know, I like it. It sort of breaks up the monotony yeah, of our rambling. You don't have to listen to each other as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, hey, Nick. Yeah, hey, welcome. Wow, you you're glowing. What a Thank tan. You. <laughs> Correct. Guys, if you're not watching this, wow. <laughs> Thank you so <laughs> much. The sun god. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing? You are. Yeah, good. Yeah, how are you? Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. It's, good. it's, it's nice to do a podcast in real life i struggle when they're on zoom because i feel like the yeah. connection is just not there yeah yeah we, we've made we have made a conscious effort not to do that mm. it's like people have said oh well, come on on zoom but i appreciate it because i feel like the flow over zoom like i have to do the interviews for attitude with the drag race lot every mm-hmm. week and sometimes you know there's a bit of a gap where you don't know if they're about to finish speaking yeah. at least yeah. in real life you can kind of gauge it and if they've Definitely. got a 56k modem or something and <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is it as well. <laughs> yeah and then drop, dropping out yeah yeah it's a nightmare um so you've you've keep you've you've queued us up nicely there drag race you're welcome that's where we would not, thank you you <laughs> um that's where we would know you from hell of a day yeah series three mm-hmm. um bing bang bong is a cultural moment in a game not that season, season, though, season two that season that's two. all <laughs> good it's bde bde oh, i yeah. knew you had one i knew you were part of a cultural moment <laughs> yeah because that was the slow one and bing yeah, bang bong was really the fast slow, one the year before. yeah so I, I'll be honest with you, All right, I'm gonna, and I'm going to say, I realise I'm saying this to someone who's been on Drag Race. Do you get Drag Race fatigue? Like I uh-huh. Get, I get, Hell yeah. <laughs> like this season is the, I haven't watched Drag Race for a few years because I was just rupaul out. Yeah, know? I know what you mean. It's in every country now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I haven't personally really watched the American one for years yeah. because mm-hmm. especially once you go through that process, watching it becomes harder. Yeah. yeah. Once you've actually seen what happens behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, I mainly just watch Australia and the UK now. That's okay. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that because it ruined the magic of it, and you like, oh, I know that they would have done that like <coughs> five times, and yeah, a little yeah. bit, a little <laughs> bit, and you know, you know when they already know what's coming up and you know that they're pretending not to know what the challenge is when really you probably okay. already know. Oh, yeah. okay. You know? you know when RuPaul's only half made up and not done below the desk. <laughs> exactly. There, there was a moment when RuPaul wasn't even there and we were reacting to one of the producers. We're like, oh. do, you know, do you know what? We, <laughs> we, that was like a thing that we played watching. I'm going, I don't think RuPaul's even yeah. there. And it could, ha, 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 ha. And I'm going, he's not there. Yeah. He's 100% not there. Uh, yeah, and it, you know, they, they'd always be like, do it again a bit more energy. Energy. So you'd be like, oh wow! <laughs> when really the first time we'd be like, oh, okay, cool. Which is not a problem for you because you're you're like a dancer, actor. How many? Yeah. Do, you're a triple threat. I am very threatening. Very <laughs> threatening. <laughs> very threatening <laughs> persona. Um, what was there a question there? Well, I don't know. Just as in that, that would be easy for you because you came from a performance yeah. background. Yeah. The I good suppose. thing with my my season, most of us were like trained actors, singers in various, you know, whatever. So it was very easy just to be fake. Yeah. I mean, the industry we're in is quite fake anyway. So no. people are quite good at being When we like, met oh Nick yeah. just now, we were just like, hey. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and now the podcast. Hey, hey welcome, Nick. <laughs> Showbiz. <laughs> yeah. um, so talk, talk, us through, talk us through that journey then. So as Joel said, mm. you, you, you were in, you're in, we're in theatre kind of before. And then... I, I, I'm interested in the logistics. So talk us through yeah, what you did before and then getting into. <sighs> oh, so long, long story short, I left home at 16 to go and train to musical theater college. Graduated at 19, then started working mainly as like a dancer sort of person, person, <laughs> mainly as a dancer person back then. Cause I didn't the really know title. if I could sing or, or anything. So my first ever job was actually on the X Factor back in dancing for That's Owen cool. Quigg back in 2008 and then over time I kind of yeah Yeah. like ginger spiky Irish uh you can't miss him oh he's not about nowadays (laughs) (laughs) you can miss him now I miss him (laughs) 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 but um then I ended up doing jobs like fame the musical like a tap dancing musical like cats all sorts of like 
the big dancey ones because I was young. <clears throat> and then over time, I just ended up covering the leads and working in the West End in Wicked, Mormon. Uh, and then, then what happened? Then lockdown happened. And I just started rehearsals for Hairspray. And lockdown happened. Worked in Morrison's up the road from me. And then by the end of 2020, I'd applied for Drag Race and went on. Because you'd not been doing drag long, had no, you, when you... No, so I'd, the first time I ever did drag was 2017. And I did it once. And then I did it once again the next year. And then I left Mormon and was like, do you know what? I own a couple of wigs. I can kind of paint a face. I'm going to put myself out there as a drag queen. And I used to apply for like drag DJ jobs, even though I can't, I haven't got a clue how to DJ, <laughs> but I'm that guy. Plug your USB in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd put Spotify on. I'm that person that's like, do you know what? I can do it. Let's go for it. Yeah, you that's know? called gay audacity. 